in Frisco, it's such a closed little knit. You know everybody. You know what I mean? And so back then the thing was, uh, you know, robbery, small little robberies, but it was arcade robbery. So they was using me. I was a little tiny dude. I was going back to the video games with a small little crowbar and another dude to help me break the back of the game. We take the quarters. <laughs> So we was hitting all the video games. But since I was so small, I was the one going to back all the video games, taking the money out. And they would have four or five people, you know, around the game to where you couldn't hear the, you know, me trying to break the shit. So that was my first little heist. I think I was seven years old, you know, but I'm walking out of there with $34 a quarter in my pocket. So I was a rich little kid at that time. You know, I was eating, you know, and they made sure I ate. That was, that was the beginning of it. Then it, you know, moved on to Stealing out of stores, you know, this is all shit just to get by, you know what I mean, at the time. Stealing food just to eat, me and my sister got to eat. Then as I grew, you know, a little older, by the time I was 10 years old, we was going to avenues, beating up little white boys and taking their bikes. By the time I was 15 years old, dope was, was cracking at that time, crack was. And uh, I was around it, got introduced and became what I hated and despised, uh, a dude that sold dope. I grow up seeing my mother do drugs, the dude she fuck with do drugs, and every dude that she came in contact with as far as any, any physical, that, that was the lifestyle. From heroin, to sherm, to cocaine, to weed, any pills, uppers, downers, lewds, quiet, all that shit. It, it, was, it was so much of it, you know what I mean, going down. Heroin was a big thing back then in the, in the early 70s. So. You know, it was times you walk in and see a dude laid out with needles in his arm, that motherfucker just died, you know what I mean, he overdosed. And that was like a normal fucking thing. They, he'd just be sitting there, you know, laid out. So, when you get, when you get exposed to these type of things, it shapes your mind. So there's no way in the world somebody outside looking in will ever understand this. So that of course they cast these, you know, illegitimate, opinions about you, not knowing. They don't know really what goes on, but outside looking in, it's easy to, you know, uh, they, they look, at, look at the little white girl, you know, got these little kids. They don't know shit was really going on of, of how she was abused to even have me or my, or my sister, you know what I mean? So it's a lot of obscurity that goes on with this, you know, outside and inside. Having a white mother around nothing but black people, I gotta, you know, how, how am I thinking that a woman's supposed to be treated? You're supposed to slap her? You're supposed to tell her to shut the fuck up, bitch, get my food? That's what I know, you know what I'm saying? That I grew up like that. And then of course, in return, I guess my mother would take the pain, the, her frustration and pain and whatever she was going through out on me because I was the, the boy or the man or whatever. So she get her ass whooped, I get my ass whooped. You know, she hated dudes, so I was a dude, so. You know, I, you don't understand at the time, you know what I mean? But these are the type of things that will, will shape your, your young mind to such a degree that anything that would fall, anything out there, any, anything that you, you know, any lifestyle that you choose to, to delve into, it's all going to be negative because that's all you know. And at that point, there is no, you know, people say, oh, you knew what you was doing wrong. You knew, no, nah, you really don't. Cause it ain't, it's not a choice. It ain't even no, if you don't got a fucking choice, how you, how can you call it wrong? It, it's wrong all fucking day. But for somebody who don't know and that's living it, they don't see it that way. They see, I'm, I'm trying to eat. You know, they see that this is the lifestyle. I don't know nothing else. We see TV, that's, that shit ain't real to us. That's not, you know, they, they going through shit that we, they experience a different life that we've never experienced or, or understand. But on the same token, they don't understand our life. You know, and that, that broke life, that downtrodden, it, it's fucked up. You know what I mean? It's no, it's nothing good about it. You know, so it, it, being exposed, like I said, that early in age, it will have your mind completely in self-destruct mode, completely. Because everything you're doing, you're against the law, you're against the niggas in the hood, you're against... It, you know, your own people, you can't trust nobody because it's all on some self crab, bring another crab down type shit out the bucket. Like, they, everybody don't give a fuck about nobody. So if that's your surrounding, how you think that's going to make you, you know, what are you going to be? What is that going to produce in a man or, or a woman? What could that possibly produce? Can't be nothing good, I can tell you that.
You ain't promised, nobody promised tomorrow, but you living in that lifestyle, your lifespan is very short, very. So if you can make it out of that, and ain't shit in this world that can fuck with you, straight up, nothing. So, you know, from the time I was young, this is what I knew. And as I, you know, seven, eight, nine, these, these years were years of homelessness, in and, in and out of juvenile hall, detention centers, uh, homeless shelters, wife, you know, uh, women's abuse shelters, living here to here, this car, that car, you know, whoever, if she, if my mama got a friend, we on her couch, three of us, it's just all fucked up. And that, that went on until I was 12 years old, to, to 11, 11 and a half, till I left my mother. And then the day I left my mother was the day that I snapped, I couldn't take the beatings no more, and I tried to kill my, my own mother with my hands. You know, and had it not been for my sister, I don't think my mother would be here right now. So I said all that to say, if I'm sitting here in front of you and I'm not the man that, you know, that I used to be or boy I used to be, if I'm sitting here in front of you, I did something that was worthy of speaking on. So I'm asking everybody that would take a look at this, whether it's for a second or a minute, if you can gain something from it, leave a remark on YouTube, leave, give me a comment on YouTube. This is how this, the change comes about. It's, it's men like me, women like, you know, some of the women I know who are in, in these streets trying to change people's life. You know what I mean? How can you change something if you don't have an example? So I'm just going to be an example. I ain't going nowhere. I have no intent on going nowhere. I'm going to be right back at you again. But I definitely want the response. I want, I want to see who's listening. And if you really care, test yourself. Holler at me on that YouTube thing. Give me some comments. And, um... You're going to see the response behind it. You'll know I'm talking to you. Peace.